Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. February is American Heart Month, so I thought it'd be fun for us to be in the cardiology section of Memory Farm's Top 200 Drugs Made Easy Coloring Book, going over the class of beta blockers. So if you're ready, let's color and learn. Before we dive into beta blockers, let's take a minute and talk about the different types of receptors. The two main ones you need to know in this section are beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. So far so easy, right? Beta 1 receptors are mainly found in the heart, so a good way to remember this is that we only have one heart. And beta 2 receptors are mainly found on smooth muscles such as the lungs and blood vessels. So think, we have two lungs. So why is this important? Knowing where the receptors are located and what they do will save you a whole lot of time. If you block beta 1 receptors in the heart, it will slow down the heart. But if you block beta 2 receptors in the lungs, it will slow down your breathing so you want to avoid this in patients with underlying respiratory diseases. But before we get too far, let's look at some of the drugs in this class. If you walk into any cardiac floor in the hospital, 99.9999% of all patients will likely be on a beta blocker. These drugs, all in the suffix LOL, such as metoprolol, atenolol, and carvedilol. Our visual anchor for this class is a beta fish laughing out loud. LOL. You want to color him in red to remind you that beta blockers work on the heart. Beta blockers are divided into two subclasses, beta-1 selective beta blockers, often called cardio selective beta blockers, and non-selective beta blockers, meaning they block beta-1 and beta-2 receptors. Cardio selective beta blockers have a greater affinity for beta-1 receptors and are less likely to cause vasoconstriction of airways or peripheral vasculature and are preferred in patients with respiratory diseases. Non-selective beta blockers block beta-1 and beta-2 receptors. So instead of just targeting the beta receptors in your heart, they also target receptors in your blood vessels, GI tract, and lungs. Non-selective beta blockers can help with slowing your breathing and preventing performance anxiety. Some beta blockers like carvedilol also bind to alpha adrenergic receptors and prevent contraction of vascular smooth muscles. So how in the world are we going to memorize which drugs are beta-1 specific and which ones are not? Two methods. You can either memorize this short list of non-selected beta blockers here, and anything not on this list will most likely be a beta-1 specific beta blocker. Or method two, you can just use this memory tip to learn the beta-1 specific beta blockers. B or beta-1, selective about your man babe. The mnemonic man babe stands for the beta-1 specific beta blockers such as metoprolol, atenolol, nabivolol, bisoprolol, aspidolol, bataxolol, and espalol. This is a great test question, so take a minute and use one of these methods to memorize this difference. Now on to indications. Remember, beta blockers slow down the heart rate. By causing the heart to beat slower and with less force, this leads to a reduction in blood volume, which in turn helps with lowering blood pressure. By slowing the heart rate, they also are used to help with angina or chest pain due to narrowing of the arteries that supply blood to the heart. They are also recommended in patients to prevent heart attacks such as irregular heart rates and arrhythmias. And super important, three specific beta blockers have been shown to reduce mortality and morbidity in patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. This includes metoprolol succinate, carvedilol, and brisoprolol. If you don't know this already, take some time to commit it to memory now. Alright, some contraindications and precautions to keep in mind. It's important to not abruptly withdraw beta blockers in patients who have been on them long term as it can lead to symptoms of chest pain or angina and rebound tachycardia and hypertension. Instead, titrate off the medication to allow the body to adjust. You want to avoid starting a beta blocker in patients with active asthma exacerbation. Why? Well, this holds true especially for non-selective beta blockers since they also block beta-2 receptors in addition to beta-1. And remember, beta-2 receptors are mainly located where? Yep, that's right, in the lungs. So it can block beta-2 receptors in the lungs and slow down the patient's breathing and worsen asthma symptoms. In patients with diabetes, beta blockers can mask symptoms of hypoglycemia such as rapid heart rate and tremor because they also block the effects of norepinephrine as well as hunger and irritability. However, sweating is not masked by beta blockers, so counsel patients to be aware of that. Okay, moving on to the mechanism of action. Did you know that beta receptors are also called beta adrenergic receptors? Well, as the root word adrenergic implies, these receptors work on adrenaline hormones such as norepinephrine and epinephrine. 
When adrenaline hormones stimulate beta receptors, it can lead to an increase in heart rate and constriction of blood vessels, causing our fight or flight response to be activated as if you were being chased by a bear. Beta blockers work to block this effect and therefore decrease heart rate, contractility, and blood pressure. Some side effects to keep in mind. Going back to our beta fish, remember the mnemonic bad fish or the phrase beta fishes always get a bad rap. B stands for bradycardia or slowed heart rate, which makes sense. B also stands for bronchospasm. That is why you don't want to give it in an active asthma attack. A is for AV block or arrhythmias as beta blockers can cause first degree AV block leading to bradyarrhythmias. D is for dizziness and depression. F is for fatigue because if your heart rate is slowed down, it can cause you to be tired. I is for impotence. S is for symptoms of hypoglycemia being masked, except for sweating. And H is for hypotension. Some important counseling points to keep in mind. Beta blockers are recommended to be taken with food to decrease side effects, preferably at the same time every day. You want to monitor for vital signs including heart rate and blood pressure. You want to advise diabetic patients that beta blockers can mask symptoms of hypoglycemia except for which symptom? You got it, it does not block sweating. And finally, you want to remind patients to avoid stopping this medication abruptly. That was a lot of information guys, so let's take some time to review it because repetition is the mother of all learning. Again, for our visual anchor for beta blockers, you want to think of a beta fish. And what is this beta fish doing? He is laughing out loud. So the drugs in this class end in the suffix LOL, such as metoprolol, atenolol, and carvedilol. Beta blockers competitively inhibit norepinephrine and epinephrine from binding on to which receptor again? That's right, beta adrenergic receptors in the heart, as you can see from this beta fish, sitting on and blocking this beta receptor. And how does this affect heart rate, contractility, and blood pressure? Yep, it decreases it. That's why it is indicated for angina, prevention of heart attacks, high blood pressure, as well as heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Some key points to know about this class. Since it works to lower heart rate and blood pressure, taking too much can lead to bradycardia and hypotension, so you want to monitor for this. Take beta blockers with what again? Yep, take them with food to decrease side effects. And last, it can mask symptoms of what? That's right, hypoglycemia, such as rapid heart rate. Move it on to side effects. B is for bradycardia and bronchospasm. A is for AV node and arrhythmias. D is for what again? Yep, dizziness and depression. F is for fatigue. I is for impotence. S is for masking symptoms of hypoglycemia. And H is for what? That's right, hypotension. Alright guys, that's it for today. If you found this helpful, click that subscribe button for more. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. If you're interested in getting more information from our Top 200 Drugs Made Easy Calling book, I will leave a link for the product in the description below and I'll see you in the next video.